Yo, you're listening to All Elite Podcast. Boom. And it is the worst podcast ever. We live. Ow! This is the All Elite Podcast. You're listening to the All Elite Podcast. Which happens to be the worst podcast I've ever been on. SCU! What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the All Elite Podcast, right here in the No Holds Barred Network, your source for all wrestling podcast content and more. I am your host, as always, your self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters, joined by my co-host, as always. She's EVP Giggles, the Heartbreak Chick, and the Queen of the Indies herself, Tiffany. (laughs) Yer. Yer to all our people in the chat. Oh, wait. We're not live. (laughs) Oh, <laughs> uh, of course. It's like the fans that are not at the show. <laughs> God. We That's what it feels like right are now. Not live. We are just like all the wrestling companies that are on TV right now. We are not doing it live because, well, of course, OBS has to run into issues. We thought it was our end. We figured out it was OBS itself. The way we stream our podcast to able to go to YouTube. Uh, Periscope on Twitter and Facebook just it just wasn't working and we just said screw it let's just record offline have it premiere for you guys there'll be a chat for this premiere but we can't see it so everyone talking right now you know be nice be kind because now we can't see it <laughs> don't be well, we singing Baby it. Shark anymore because it was at first damn it <laughs> that song is in my head baby thanks shark, Carl do, like, do, really? do, 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 baby shark no <laughs> <laughs> I enjoyed that when it first came out. I'm not gonna lie, that was a pretty catchy tune. It's on TikTok, Kyle. You gotta sign up for TikTok, and you can see all the videos of oh, Baby yeah, Shark. Yeah, yeah, sure, 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 sure. Yeah, no, get, get on that. No, get on that. Um, anywho, Brihu, guys, welcome to the Fighter Fest review and recap of Night Numero Uno of AEW's uh, Dynamite Presents Fighter Fest. I guess is how we're doing it. Um, so we had Night One this week. A lot of interesting developments happening in the night. Uh, that has to do with night two, and we found out that in two weeks, in two weeks' time, we're already at another AEW event. We're going to have AEW's fight for the fallen right after Fighter Fest. That's like crazy. we're getting a is this is basically pay per view month. They might as well just do another event after Fight for the Fallen, or make it two, <laughs> or make it two nights as well, and have the entire month of July just be AEW pay per view month. Happy AEW month. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> Happy AEW month. We'll, 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 we'll call it, I guess. <laughs> um, but yeah, we'll touch, briefly touch base, guys, on BT and Dark, how we really usually do on this podcast. If you're new, welcome. Myself and Tiff here on the a, uh, a, AP podcast talk about uh, everything in that AEW world in a fun and positive manner. We try to keep it all fun and exciting. And not try to be Debbie Downers because wrestling Twitter is such a Debbie Downer area. Oh, don't, don't be extra. Uh, <laughs> so we try to keep it fun and yar, try to keep it fun and positive for you guys. Um, okay, serious question. Oh, did you seriously hear me yesterday in Canada from New York streaming for Private Party? See, believe it yes. or not, Tiff, through all the fireworks and craziness that's been happening outside due to Canada Day yesterday, I still heard just scream. Yay! It, I was like, was that a cat? What was that? That was the plan, man. It was only so Kyle could hear me oh. all the way in okay. Canada. I heard her, guys. If you don't know, she is a massive fan of the tag team Private Pate, and they had a match last night, which we'll get into. 
Uh, before we get anywhere, guys, just we quickly touch base on it. Um, the AEP tourney has finally come to a close. So uh, we had a uh, basically almost a month-long tournament, a Twitter tournament, to crown the first ever AEP Twitter World Champion. Uh, put up the brackets for you guys really quickly for you guys. We had a, a lot of interesting matchups in this tournament with Chris Jericho becoming the finalist in the left bracket and then there in the right bracket, Kenny Omega becoming the finalist there. So... Out of both Chris Jericho and Kenny Omega, the voting came to an end, and your official winner and new AEP Twitter World Champion, Le Champion, Chris Jericho. And yes, I got him photo cropped, <laughs> him holding I'm that up. belt. <laughs> Kyle and his skills. <laughs> so, like most importantly, now everyone that choose or that chose. Chris Jericho to win the tournament. Now, this is how it's going to work. Tomorrow on our Twitter account, at All Elite Pod, you're going to want to make sure you're tuning in. At noon tomorrow, I'm going to post the... I'm going to make a small video of the drawing. I'm going to take all your names, everyone that chose Chris Jericho, and put them in a random... It's like a name out of a hat generator. I have this website that I use. I'm going to click it once, and the winner will receive a Shop AEW gift card. So I'll do that all tomorrow at noon. So make sure you are following the All Elite Podcast's Twitter account at All Elite Pod. Yay! So, yeah. Yay! So exciting. We like to have fun here. Yes. Um, what else was fun was uh, BT this week. Oh man. Oh, I want some ribs. Yeah, we got. <laughs> I was just gonna say, are you are you craving ribs after that episode? Because every I'm craving ribs. A little bit of the bubbly. <laughs> like, give it to me. I want it all. Baby back <laughs> ribs was the title of this BT. <laughs> this is a funny episode. I'm not gonna lie. Um, I mean, they started out the opening and the closing with that baby back ribs thing. Like, everyone's oh singing God. along, and I was waiting. I didn't think Hangman would join in and sing, but right. <laughs> he joined it's in. Right? Was like, I lost it. And when he started singing, I lost it. I'm like, oh my god. So that was pretty funny. Um. So if anyone remembers when Brandon Cutler first got signed to AEW, this was last year around this time when they were doing, we didn't have AEW content. We had like a couple like weekly things of like these like documentary series, like the row two things. And the one was about Brandon Cutler getting his two contracts. And it was such a feel good moment. He, they've been best friends with the Bucks. So <laughs> they kind of mini did it again. But his prize this time was that he gets a match against the Young Bucks with Peter Avalon on Dark. <laughs> I love it. By the way, Brendan Cutler's on Cameo now. If you want a Cameo, oh. uh, you know, it's only 25 bucks. Go support Cutler footage. Hashtag he was, man, Cutler he was, footage. he was a lot. He was in a lot on yeah. BT this week. And again, our boy. I can't stress this enough. It is not called Cutler Cam. <laughs> we got it again this week, Tiff. I'm very upset. It's Cutler footage. Now, whoever's editing it, repeat it. after me. Cutler footage. Footage. F O O T A G E. That's how you spell I clipped it. Footage. I yeah, tagged them last week. I mean, again, and guys, if you haven't seen our interview with Brandon Cutler, go back to episode 26. Right, yeah, we're at episode 90 now, Tiff. We are 10 away. Yeah. And you know what, Tiff? I have it. I have it mapped out. Believe it or not, our 100th episode will be on the go home show for All Out. Oh, so okay. We're gonna do a big extravaganza episode that yeah, week. We're I think. Gonna yeah. big. We're, gonna, we're gonna do. We're gonna do something big. Mm -hmm. So. Hundred. Oh, oof. Yep. <laughs> so the they were making commercials for their action figures. I thought was pretty cool. A lot of screaming. They're losing their voices, which is cool. I can't wait to see those commercials because those look really well done in a lot of like CGI. Because you see like Kenny going, oh my stomach. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if like the I action figure the is like kicking him. I need like I don't know like I want the Matt Jackson one because this is my boy. I think they but I think they come in a pack. I thought they came separated. Oh, maybe I didn't really look I, into I, it. I heard that they were separated and then like they weren't coming as a pack. To be honest, I really cared about the Omega one. I was like, okay, that's the one I'm buying. Well, yeah. So when private party comes out, that's coming out, and then I can you know update my shrine that I have in the corner because it needs some updating, you know, like Ooh, so. Anyway, the shrine. Ooh, the shrine. Anyway. <laughs> they did a, like a little funny pre-workout skit where they basically were like making it seem like it was the other white powdered stuff, which I won't say the name of, but you can pretty much guess what they were talking about. <laughs> but then uh, oh. Matt was like, I'm Christian AF. I don't do that stuff. 
We should all be Christian AF. I'm just saying. You know, <laughs> you sprinkle a little bit of Christian AF on the wrestling community. <laughs> yeah, we need a little bit of yeah. that. <laughs> um, Nick in Private Party, that was a pretty funny thing. The, the one there in catering. Oh, my God. And then he was I dead ass. This. I talked about this on Wrestle Forum. Like, Matt Jackson's on my list of husbands, but Nick's on the shit list because he's messing with my boys. And I just <laughs> don't appreciate Tiff. it. Why is that a yell at my boys? He's what? not just serious. He's dead ass. <laughs> I'm kinda, I feel attacked right now. Okay, Nick Jackson, I feel attacked. <laughs> She's not just regular. Don't attack. mess with She's my boys. Dead ass don't, attacked. Don't mess. Don't mess with my boys. Okay, like seriously, like I don't like it. But even when they went back over, and then I like how like they sit uh, and Matt's in between them, and then mm. he like pulls the thing down, and then he's just. Yeah. <laughs> then it's like the lightning, like I don't like the thunder. Their reaction now. too, like <laughs> Pride Party's reaction to it is hilarious. They're so extra. They're so yeah. New York. I love it. Those are the boys. I can't. Those are my boys. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, Orange Cassidy was with the Dark Gore while your boy is uh the Beaver Boys. I'm always yeah. gonna call the Beaver Boys. That's great. I know um, it's kind of hard. Like I want to like go back to all the independent names and like I can't. But this was such a funny skit. Oh, my God. They're trying to, like, basically they, recruit him. I love how they brought up the indie scene as well, yeah. you know, so that they were talking about how they were like, oh, you know, we were in the indie scene together. And stuff. Like, so I love that. So, like, me being the queen of the indies, like, I totally appreciate this. Yeah. But he, the, the spill Kool-Aid. drank. They gave him the Kool-Aid. The Kool-Aid. <laughs> and he, uh, like, uh, slowly, you, like, pushed it. Don't don't you do it. Don't you do Bad. it. Don't you do it. Don't you dare. Oh. <laughs> uh. And speaking of Dark Order, this next part, oh, oh my god, <laughs> I, I died this next part. So, Brody Lee runs in the Hangman in the hallway, and Hangman was going like, to explain to him that he even tried to join the Dark Order back in like January, February, but no one answered oh. him, and he didn't get any replies back. And Brody was pissed, like, you mean to tell me that we could have had the Hangman page, like the Hangman page in the Dark Order? And he just <laughs> lost his mind. Threw the papers at Alex Reynolds and John oh, Silver. Oh I think the best part is when, for me, was when Hangman Page was like, "Good luck with your cult," and mm-hmm. the brother is like, "What?" what? <laughs> <laughs> like, yes. I was like, "This is great." I was, I was in a dark place. I was, uh, you know. <laughs> and he called Uno. He's like, "Do you have a stack of papers in front of you?" Yeah, yeah. Smack yourself over the head with it right now. Oh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> these are great. These Dark Order skits are great. I'm glad they they. Like, Brody has a sense of humor to join in on these BTE skits. Like, these are great. Um, then we had uh, Cutler and Frankie, this mini segment. I don't know what's up, what's up with Frankie okay. talking in this hick accent. That, apparently, from what I've been talking about with a couple of people, they said it's kind of like a shot at AJ Styles. Oh. I thought it was going to so, be a shot at what's-his-face, Jim Cornette, because he kind of sounds like uh, that. Maybe. I don't know. So, what do you guys think? So, leave leave your comments below. We we're really curious. Jim like, Cornette think, I- or AJ Styles. Which one do you guys think it is? Because it could be yeah. either because they both have that same accent. <laughs> um, Matt Hardy, oh, Nick's segment was freaking I, – I was dying at this, too. He turned basically Nick back into the merch freak, and Matt Hardy was, like, <laughs> in the clips going, ah. <laughs> merch freak. Merch freak. I hope we get more merch freak now. I forgot about it, and I'm so glad that it came back because I just love Nick Jackson with doing the merch. See, he's on the shit list, though, but I love that he did He did the merch freak because it's glorious. <laughs> and then we had more Spanglish stuff, and then... Uh, oh, jeez. Trying to join the the Dark Order. Yeah. They were like, what? You know, like, oh, they're like, no, we didn't say order. <laughs> like, we're doing order. Like, it order. Okay. <laughs> and then Colt. Trying to mess with Kenny, walked into them singing "Baby Back Ribs." He's like, "Maybe not today." <laughs> so BT was funny this week. It was hilarious. Um, <laughs> Good episode. We needed yeah. we needed some laughs. Yeah. A few takeaways from Dark this week. I mean, Sean Spears has been getting momentum, which is pretty good. I'm I'm glad that they're going somewhere with this. Uh, Janelle and Archer had a more of a build up. Ricky Starks guy looks like an absolute star. That guy is definitely a future of this company. He looks really good. He got he was trending during Dark this week. Uh, Scorpio Sky's new theme, I thought it sounded pretty cool. So they're again they're gearing him up for a singles run, and then uh, there's more beef between uh, Brandy and Allie, and then obviously we had the Cutler and Young Bucks thing, which is pretty funny at the end. But that was pretty much Dark this week. Another good episode. Like you gotta watch Dark, guys. Watch Dark. Like give yeah. your support a to Dark. You're getting the views for their YouTube account for AEW. 
But there's a lot of cool shit that happens on Dark. Like, you're getting, like, two episodes of AW a week almost. So, yeah. can't complain about that. And Team some wrestling. And some stuff <laughs> progresses. Like, you, you see build-up for other things you might watch on Dynamite on Dark. So, it's a good way to watch. So Support your indie guys as well. <laughs> exactly. Anywho. Rehu. Rehu. The moment of truth. Everyone's here to see and hear from us in is the Fighter Fest Night Uno uh, review and recap. Uh, Tiff, we tied in picks. We were four out of five. We, did. we were close. We were almost perfect. We are close for night. Yeah. I, yeah, well, I almost threw the controller at the TV last night. <laughs> <laughs> I was so oh. mad. I was so mad. <laughs> um, can I just say that Chris Jericho's suit probably won the internet last night? Oh, I'm just saying. God, yeah. That was I the most amazing Canadian thing I've ever seen. It, he made Don Sherry proud for anyone that knows that about that. That was great. Um Another thing that they mentioned uh, later on the night, uh, you know, we'll get to that when we talk about the tag team match. But uh, okay. we had a Darby okay. Allen vignette at uh, one point in the night, which I'm liking. Um, it was like crazy skateboard stuff. That backflip he did in the video, I mean, backflipping and landing on the skateboard and going down the, the hill. I was like, oh, okay, <laughs> like Darby. He just he was on the phone saying like, I'm not. What do you mean I'm not medically cleared? And then hung up and then he got pissed and he's like, no, I'm gonna go out and do crazy shit. Because he's, he's basically proving to us guys that this guy is still going to go and do this this stuff, medically cleared or not. But I like it that they're making him more, like, they're still making him relevant, right? Yeah. Like, we all are big fans of Darby Allen, right? Like, but he's still here. Yeah. So I'm glad, like, we're still getting little bits, even from other wrestlers that we've seen through the weeks, that we saw Pac, we saw... Um, Jack Evans yeah. and like I'm loving that at least like we're still here guys even like Britt Baker right like even though that she's not cleared and she's not gonna yeah. be cleared to all out like she's still there and we have this story building so like hopefully like the payout's gonna be great when we have this match with her and Swole mm -hmm. so but Darby's still here to play he's not going anywhere Swole's got a pretty so. sweet t-shirt by the way she just got a new one yeah. and it comes in four different colors not just black mm -hmm. <laughs> Yes, I think some uh, of the shirts are like that, that you can change uh, yeah, the color. Yeah, a lot of them come in, like, white, too. But uh, yeah. I just I thought it was pretty cool. It was a cool design. It was, like, talk, blank, get, hit, kind of thing like that. Uh, anywho, uh, we opened up Fighter Fest with MJF and Wardlow against Jurassic Express. Um, MJF cut a promo. No, don't even go. Like, we got to talk about the robe, okay? Like, oh, sorry, don't you mean the Moo Moo? The <laughs> I was distracted by the Moo Moo, okay? <laughs> That's not that's a moo moo. All, all I could think of last night was Victoria's Secret <laughs> slash freaking juicy couture. Hey, like, you know I, I, couture and like um, MGF a classy like, guy, man. He 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 would he would wear something from Victoria's listen, Secret. Hashtag real men wear pink. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm kid you not. That thing's a moo moo. That was a moo moo. That way ain't no robe. He can say it was a robe all he wants. And then he he retweeted the picture of someone cropping his head on Homer Simpson wearing the moo moo. So look pretty close. Like, Who did this? Who did this? <laughs> Who did this? Uh, but I was right though with this match though that I said Warlow was gonna take this pin. But but go ahead, you could go like mm -hmm. break down the match. Uh, well, the the <laughs> no, not too much to break down. I, the the promo before when he, he dropped the like the ratings war thing. And I'm like, oh shit! Right in the beginning of the episode, dropping the ratings war, and then it's basically saying like, I'm the reason there's a ratings war. Like I'm the guy. I'm the reason why we spike up in like taking credit for everything. So that was a very good way to kind of incorporate that. Um, the really coolest spot I loved in the match was the everyone kicking up. Like it started with uh, both Wardlow and and Lucha so or it started sorry it started with MGF and Jungle Boy kicking up. And then Luchasaurus and Wardlow kicking up right after. I thought that was a really cool spot. Um, and Jeff ended up accidentally punching Wardlow in, with the ring. And do you see what he said right before? He's like, well, can you do anything right? So there's more deception like we talked about in the predictions. The deception was the factor of this match. Ends up costing it for them. And Jurassic, Jurassic Express picks up the win. And a very, very entertaining and great way to start the match. Or start the night off. Yeah. There's a lot of good wrestling. Yeah. I really thought like that Cody was going to start off and then we were thinking like private party and Ortiz and Santana were going to start off. So like I was kind of thrown that this was our first match to open up. Um, but 
I mean, I'm still going to go with my whole theory that I think that, and I had said this on even other people's podcasts as well. Uh, I was on Bob Culture's podcast and I was saying this too, that I think this is supposed to be setting up. Um, it's not going to be yet Moxley. I'm, um, Wardlow and MJF. I think MJF is going to go up against Moxley at All Out and Wardlow is going to cost him the belt. And that's when I think we're really going to get the feud of Wardlow and MJF. That's what I really think. What do you think? Full gear. Maybe they have a match. Like, yeah, yeah. Full gear. Like, I think full gear they're going to have the match, but I yeah. think All Out is going to be MJF because we're getting like a little bit, but I kind of want to see a little bit more of a stretch. I don't want to see them right now at all out it would be good but i just feel like you built mjf to win all these matches right he's undefeated mm -hmm. and i think he deserves a title shot and we've talked about that mjf is not uh AEW champ ready i do see it down the line just not yet but give him a title shot give him that title shot and i think eventually like i can kind of see it like with him and cody down the line yeah. like that's where the championship belt's gonna come into play so, but that's later, not now. But so, what if ahead, what right? if something happens like this? What if at all out? And it, no, it's it's something at AW. It's not something that AW's done and, or probably would do. I just mm -hmm. brainstorming in my head. What if at all out, it's a triple threat and MGF and Wardlow are put in the match? But how are you going to build that? Well, how would you build that? Because there's already deception now. Like something's got to come out of what just happened this week. I don't want to see a triple threat for the belt with Moxley. I and just like, don't. So you think that Wardlow's just going to brush off what happened this week? Because he, he was screaming yeah. at Wardlow. And I don't know because if Wardlow like saw going. MGF get pushed from behind and get punched in the face. And maybe yeah, he but he can that play as... that off too. But that's the thing. He could be like, you see right here, like in the clip, this is what happened. If they decide to go that route, because we've already seen it starting and like everything was fine and everything went back to normal. Right. Mm -hmm. So I think like maybe if they're going to play that, it could be like, oh, you see, we watched the, you know, we watched the playback and Luchasaurus, you kicked me in the head and, you know, blah, 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 blah. So, no, I don't mm -hmm. I, I don't want a triple threat. So not for the belt. OK. Not Let's for see this. what happens because I, I imagine we're yeah. going to get something next week on on Fighter Fest night number two about what's happened or maybe on on uh, okay, I can't I would say Dynamite the week after but Fight for the Fallen sorry the week after so we're probably going to see it next week for sure. Um, right. We moved on. We had Penelope Ford faced off against Akaru Shida for the AW Women's World Title. Uh, great women's match. Very very oh. good women's match. Um, I put this tweet out last night. I was like, I want, I don't want people to keep saying the women, there is no women's division. It's not good. Blah, 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 blah. I don't want to hear it. Watch this match. If well, you did not watch it, this is women's unless wrestling Unless they right meant here. that there's no division as in there's not a lot of talent because there really, there's no, not a lot. No, they're saying that the talent's not good. That's oh. what people are saying. And people give me crap all the time and I hate it. But this right here, this is your storytelling. This is how I was hyped. I think I was probably hyped for this match the most out of everything that we watched last night. I was so hyped. They got they got me to believe. They I felt the storytelling in it. Penelope Ford is not one to mess with. Yeah, in, she's in, improved in tremendously AW. since starting yes. in AEW. Like we've we've seen a, a a tremendous like up up climb with her since starting in AEW and this is I think she really showed everybody last night. She was trending at one point on Twitter in the top 10 that she really showed to the naysayers and maybe people that really don't didn't fully believe in her at first. I think she definitely proved last night that she to those people that she can go in the ring and, you know, people need to start paying attention to her because she's the real deal. Um she she did a, she had a fantastic match. There's a lot of cool spots that she did. The one way I, I keep remembering is the one where she did was to go dive on her and she did like that gymnastics like back thing and completely thing. yeah like the major thing and dodged it the things that she was doing in indie scene as well and that's why like again me i'm spoiled with a lot of these people that i knew before the fact so it's like i knew what she was capable of so i'm so glad and i finally like i said like this was the chemistry of these two together in the ring was amazing mm -hmm. oh my god and then poor kip that he got thrown out yeah. <laughs> in the beginning and he took the kendo stick and everything and then like when he came back in and then she beat him with the kendo stick but i guess uh you're not getting your i mean i know he had a different pair of sunglasses oh, but yeah. i guess you're not getting your money back for that you know the 500 dollars for those glasses but <laughs> i'm sure tony khan helped him out 
No, okay. Yeah, maybe so, maybe send know. to his his sunglass guy. <laughs> ah, okay, um, gotcha. But where does she kind of go from here? Like, I don't know where the woman's okay. title scene kind of goes from here. I really like I really like Ray's theory. Ray really believes that Nyla Rose is facing uh, Rio. That Rio is coming back next week, and that Rio okay. comes back, and Rio comes for Rio versus Sheeta. So I kind of really like that theory, and I think I'm gonna go with him on this. Okay, yeah, I like unless that. you can start building some new new stars. I mean, because now Chris Statlander is out. I mean, I would love. Well, did, Big R- did Rio go back to Japan before COVID? Because if that if she know. did, she still wouldn't be able to come back because they're not allowing flights from across the world. Right. Yeah. Yeah. From, yeah, to, yeah. <laughs> or else we would already seen Pac back. I guess we'll see. Yeah. We'll so see. what? The, but I do like that theory. Unless she is back yeah. and she was just quarantined somewhere, but we'll see. Yeah. Um, we moved on. We had uh, Hager versus Cody for the TNT Championship. Okay, what the hell was Hager wearing? Those weren't wrestling trunks. <laughs> I went. I seen Smart to Death Anthony's tweet, and I'm like, "Oh my God, he has a point." Because I've seen those before, and I think I own a pair of those. Those were men's boxer briefs. Those weren't wrestling trunks. Are they? I think those were men's boxer briefs, man. Like they, I think I have the same color too. <laughs> Even I know Queen of Any was not a fan either. She's like, like baby, baby wearing? blue. We were talking about fashion last night on Twitter. <laughs> How do you go from like what you wore last time to that? I, it's almost like he forgot to put his trunks on over top of those. He's like, nah, screw it. I'll go out there anyways. <laughs> they won't know. It's hot. It's hot. It's loose. It's hot. I mean, maybe. yeah, it's maybe humid there. <laughs> so maybe maybe that's what he was thinking. I don't know. <laughs> anyways, uh, Cody came out. I love this T-shirt. Cody's T-shirt pyro. was a big deal. Big pyro, yeah, obviously. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of moved on <laughs> from that. Uh, his T-shirt, though, loved it. Loved it. That he had, he did the American Nightmare in the Great American Bash font because it was his dad that started that yeah. pay per view, and we know why. Well, there's a reason why he wore that shirt because another company decided to take the name again and decided to be petty. But that is what that is. Um, Hager was announced as Rock Hard. Don't know what the reason behind that is. Oh my god! Like up about that last night. Like everybody was dying. Amy, uh, she was like. You know what? We got a lot of laughs last night. That's all I could say, right? Like, mm-hmm. I just rock hard. I was just like, mm. okay. <laughs> uh, was... Oh, maybe you lo- use Blue Chew. <laughs> oh boy, Blue Chew, come on, sponsor us. Anywho, <laughs> very good physical match though. As for the match itself, I very much enjoyed this match. It's very good, very physical. Um, very interesting and kind of confusing ending. I was very weirded out about how they finished the match with Cody pinning in that sort of awkward style because he was caught in like a, a headlock of some sorts by Hager. And yeah. after the, the ref count, after Aubrey count, or not Aubrey, yeah, the, the, that one ref, I don't know his name, counted. Um, Hager thought he won the match. And I'm like, wait, did Cody tap at the same time? And the commentators think he didn't. And Hager was just confused. I was like, what the heck was going on? It was yeah, but it it, 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 it kind of like fixed itself because it led to Hager punching out the referee and they noted on commentary, this is the first time a referee's got punched out after the match. So I don't know what they're going to do. What are they going to do? Storyline suspension? Like, I don't know how AW is going to go about this. Did you see that Nyla's wife was like, he better get suspended because her wife got, her wife got suspended. Yeah, you that's know, true. That Nyla got when she threw through the table. Yeah. So, um, so I don't know. I guess we'll see what happens. Yeah, well, I guess we'll have to see. Uh, private party faced proud. Pri- private party faced proud and powerful. So PP against PP For round, here. Round proud nine hundred fifty-two. Nine round nine hundred fifty-two. <laughs> now these guys have faced numerous times on the indie scene, so it's so. And I know like AEW was not ready to see this, so I know I had shared a couple of clips of them facing each other in the indie scenes as well. But my boys, <laughs> and Orange Cassidy was on commentary. Can't forget that he he came oh, out and yes. set up a, a steel chair next to the table. 
He was in the bushes too. He was like playing with the leaves, and Chris Jericho was like, "What is this guy doing out here? What is he?" He's just yelling at him the whole time, which is great. But the match was great. Um, Private Party's new theme song, I'm 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 digging it, man. I love the whole shots thing. That's just oh, it's killer. It's it's and it's fire. It's just oh. My background is oh, Private Party because Kyle like tagged me. I was like <laughs> instant, instant background. That was a really cool course, background. That was a really good wallpaper. Yeah, is is still number one, but. You know, private the other boys, my other yeah. boys, they have to be my background. I have to support my boys. Mm-hmm. And it was a very good tag team match. I, you got what you were expecting out of both these teams. They put it on, they laid it out in the line, they put on a show, a lot of cool moves. Um, we've got the gin and juice. It finally made its return. We haven't seen that in a while. <laughs> Done so perfectly. Um, the biggest <laughs> question: that Maybe they only got the they were only given twenty minutes. And they cut it pretty close. Could should they have just gone to a twenty minute draw with these two teams and taken the draw? No, no. But then you're because you're kind of like putting down we were. the but inner we circle. Never got to where we were. Yeah, but we would have never got to where we are now with the fact that they're gonna go for a title shot. Yeah, now, I, that week. that might have so, changed those plans too. Know, but I kind of feel like they should have gone twenty minutes, hey, man. That's wrestling for yeah. you. Things change like all the time. I don't know, but this so, this hurt the inner circle even more because now they're zero two uh, out of Fighter Fest, so it's down to Chris yeah, Jericho. See, I know a lot of people are saying that they're like, oh, like now they're burying the inner circle. You got to remember too, right? Like inner circle was very, very, very strong, right? And now, and I talk about this every episode. You need to start building everybody else on your roster. Mm-hmm. So I had said Santana and Ortiz were the perfect people to put over or um, private party. And then on top of that, they're walking around with 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 Matt Hardy. It's mm-hmm. like they're he's the mentor, right? So I mean, there's a lot that can happen here. Uh, I know, like me and Brad were talking about this last night, but we'll get into it once we go into the main event because mm-hmm. it has to do with that as well. But I don't think the inner circle is getting buried. I think now it's like we're taking like some turns. It's time. They they were huge. They're still big. I'm still a fan of the inner circle. That hasn't changed, but you need to start making other stars here. So it's time to move move on to the other people on the roster. I just don't think a tie would have hurt both teams. It would have just shown that both these teams needed more time and a draw just made them both look really good. It wouldn't have hurt but then either again, team. Where where would have? Like, yeah, I'm, I'm just saying, Tiff. I'm saying because been- that is obviously due to another predicament. That's why they changed it. But right. if that that predicament did not have changed, these teams, I think, should have gone to a draw. Do you agree on well, that? You, you guys will no, because I'm still I'm still gonna go with how I feel about that. I'm not gonna agree with that because I really don't think it was gonna be a draw. I but really don't. You have to agree. It wouldn't hurt either team. Yeah, it wouldn't hurt either team, but then it's like, well, you're, you know, you're not, you're not pushing private party, right? And that's the whole thing. You're it's pushing like we're both seeing teams in a way. Team. Yeah, but but Ortiz and Santana are already over, right? Me, of course, like again, I'm biased as hell because I'm from New York and I've seen both of these guys, so I'm a fan of both. It doesn't matter if you're here or face. You're still New Yorkers to me. I'm still gonna be a fan of yours, but. Again, you know, story-wise, then who's who's the next people to go up against tag team? Once though? in a while, you're going to have to have some time limits because why even ca- do the time limits if you're never going to have a draw? But there was a time limit. He got it before the 20 minutes because they said during the match, no, five I minutes mean, remaining. That's what I mean. If, if they're going to if they're gonna count time, why we even have it? If you're not going to have a draw once in a while in the AEW, why even do times? You know what I mean? They don't... There has been there before. Who? The one, what was it, Pac and... Uh, that was an Iron Man Mox? match, though. Who was the one, was it, who was, well, there was another one. There was a match that it went into that. But it doesn't matter anyway. It, you have to time it out correctly anyway. You're, they're kind of... I'm just going to stick with that. I think a, a tie wouldn't have hurt either All right, team. We're, we're going to okay. move on yeah. because, like, this could be, like, a conversation that could keep going between <laughs> me and Kyle. And so, it's like, I'm going to be in my mood and he's going to be on his mode. So, so like, all right, moving Jericho on. Jericho and OC <laughs> sort of brawled after, in a way, not really, but Jericho tried to. And Pineapple Pete was, was like, holding... Extra. Orange Cassidy back and Orange Cassidy wasn't doing anything. And the look on Pineapple Pete's face while he was like, he's like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> like, don't, don't, don't do it, man. And then Orange Cassidy just like, meh. Meh. Um, so this is where it tied into this. So they had a, a, f- something that was filled in because obviously what was happening with John Moxley and 
Renee Young with the whole COVID situation. They moved Brian Cage and Moxley to fight for the fall, which is happening in two weeks, uh, so that uh, Moxley can be uh, quarantined. They can go from there. So they had Taz and Brian Cage come out, and Taz is amazing at promo work. Oh, my God, did they find a gem in him pairing up with Brian Cage, where Brian Cage is the, the muscle and Taz is the mouthpiece. It's always cool seeing that in wrestling, and it, it works. Um, now, there was the, the sloppy sloppy shop shot uh, at, obviously, a particular company who's not taking COVID seriously and has gotten a lot of their participants sick. And it's just like, yeah. I mean, he wasn't wrong. <laughs> like, you, you, your, your company take thinks that you're the top of the world and you're above everybody else shouldn't you have this covid thing under control and not let it break out the way it did and act more serious i'm just saying um i think it's gonna start affecting more though this covid situation both companies because now um the floor is getting even worse and masks are going to become very man i hope they start wearing masks i know aw tests every single day but the people that they have up there in the crowd that are all together, whoever those people are, I think, I don't know if they're getting tested or not, but they probably should start be wearing masks just to set a good example. So it's just, it's getting, it's getting ridiculous. So see what the next couple of weeks, I think yeah. that they recorded um, some stuff as <clears throat> well, just in case that they were like protecting the future. Yeah. That's what I heard. And then we had the main so, event, which yeah. I look at the time and I'm like, oh no. Like this main event is not yeah. they're not giving this any time and I was worried. Yeah. And I I think it mostly had to do with what this this Moxley and COVID situation. Um I think the best part of all of it though was the entrance of the best friends. <laughs> and I was they oh. got driven in by Trent's mom. <laughs> Trent's <Sue>. mom <laughs> Sue. drove him to work. Oh my God. And then she made I him come back how. and kiss her on the cheek. I don't know how he kept a straight face. That was great. And she went and parked the minivan. She was in the crowd. She's watching like a good mom. And I'm like, how do, they, how do they not lose this match? She loves her Trenty. <laughs> it was a good match. Yo, can we talk about this gear? Because yeah. let's get serious. I was loving the gear. Oh, my God. He's dirty hot. Oof. Okay. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> Sorry. Ooh. Talk about the time with an AW podcast, not a talk about Trent podcast. Let me get water. <laughs> but yeah, the the finish it just it felt like a, a rushed finish. I felt the wrong team won. I really do think best friends should have won, but if obviously because of oh. what happened with the whole mock situation, they had to pull a audible, and it looks like it's going to be Kenny and Hagman against. Uh, private party who they announced in the show as well would face the winners of this match for the tag team championships next week to to replace the mox and brian cage match so which begs me to think here tiff are your boys gonna win the tag team championships next week and how crazy are uh, you going to go if they win i everybody everybody's gonna hear me okay if they win i'm yeah. gonna i need to get some champagne or something because i need to mm-hmm. pop at the bubbly and Oh my god, I'm not gonna be able to contain myself if they freaking win. And like I owe them a drink because I had told them at a show that I saw them, I was like, if you win the tag team championships, I'm buying you a drink. Yeah. <laughs> so I owe you guys a drink. Yeah. If that happens. So uh I I did not forget that. I will buy them a drink. So <laughs> I promise them. It'd be but, interesting, uh, but I this I definitely felt like an audible shit. though. Like this, I think best friends were supposed to win this match, and I think I'm they're supposed to be given so more time. Mad. I'm so mad that they didn't win. I wanted them to win so bad. Again, I'm a big private party fan, as you guys know, but I really wanted best friends to win this. I almost threw the controller at the television. I was so mad. <laughs> we it might see. Really was. You know what? We might see three straight weeks. Or maybe in the or three straight times in the month of July, this these titles being defended because you think about it. Next week, the titles are going to be defended again. I think at Fight for the Fallen, they're going to be defended again. If the, if they're going to do Fight for the Fallen night one and two, we haven't we haven't got details about that. But so, Ray thinks that the titles are going to Private Party, and then the titles are being flipped to FTR. That oh, quick. that's what FTR, Ray thinks. and then start the build. 
between FTR and because we're already starting to see it, right? Of how it ended last night. That's what he thinks. Because even me and Brad were talking yesterday and he was saying, like, he wanted best friends to win also. And he was saying the more and more you think about it, right? It really does look like they're setting up FTR, which we know it's we are waiting for this dream match or whatever like that. But the question is, and if you're watching this, leave your comments below. Do, does this match between FTR and Young Bucks, does it need a title? Because I don't think it needs a title. That It's that good because this has been building for years that we've been wanting to see this this match, this dream match. Does it need the belt? Is it going to be more with the belt? I think, it, I think it for sure adds more to the match. I, I say no because I, I'm still going to sit here and I'm still going to preach you need to build your other roster on AEW. I, just, I, I don't see... The new guys. I don't see FTR taking the belts off. Not trying to say they're a weaker team. I see the FTR's first championship win against a credible tag team like the Young Bucks or a credible team like maybe they end up taking it off Kenny and Hangman. What if Kenny and Hangman retain next? What if it's FTR finally take it off oh, them to, to make a too. statement? That's to make a statement that they're not a real tag team and shouldn't be tag team champions. Right. Like it just right. to me it just it doesn't seem like a credible win for FTR to take the belts off a private party who would be just freshly won champions. So that, that's my take know, on like, it. I don't honestly, I don't know how I feel about it. I really felt like really the way that you've been building best friends best friends should be the champions right now but i get it but again you have to start building your other roster i'm so yeah. i'm still gonna preach it's the only thing um uh, and i get it business wise like what's gonna bring your draw in your you, people know the elite people know chris jericho right like people know these guys and stuff and and i get it but we're almost at that year mark you need to start building other other people up so we have other stars. So ugh, I don't know like what's going to happen next week. I'm torn. I'm really freaking torn with private party because I can see it going either way for private party, mm. have a small reign and then losing to somebody like FTR or something mm. or I can't. or just from the way they ended Fighter Fest last night with Kenny pouring out the beer and then kind of like disrespecting FTR after trying to give them beers. That's kind of setting something up. They wouldn't have done that yeah. to end the show if they weren't going to do something with those two teams. So I, I think you're right. I don't think – I'd love it, of course. Again, I'm biased. I'm always going to be biased. Yeah. I love my boys. <laughs> and unfortunately, like I, I, I think with you, I don't think it's going to drop to private party. But at the same time, too, mm -hmm. it could mean something if private party takes the belt because Matt Hardy is mentoring private party. So don't you think it would Hardy mean party. something – <laughs> party party so don't you think it would be kind of cool like something in that sense that yeah. it was like okay well now it's starting to mean something because even though like i'm a fan but not everybody's a fan of private party like i'm a fan so what's a good way to get private party more out there is here's matt hardy and matt hardy's mentoring right so i can see that what about a quick flip to the best friends I mean, I'd be okay with that too because I really feel the best friend should really be the one. I think they should have the won. I think they were supposed to. I think because of what I happened to Mox. <laughs> I think it's because what happened to Mox, it was an audible. It was an audible pull at the last minute. Tony Khan's used to audibles. He knows football. There was an audible pull at the last minute, and they had to switch it up, and that's the, the what they came out with. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens. It's going to be, it, it makes you. Want again, it's another thing that AW's pulling you in. They're gonna be like, Hey, you have to come see what's gonna happen. We know that the gears are turning in our heads and they're gonna, they're gonna lure us in. So, it, next week's shaping up to be a very good week. And we look at the docket here we have Young Bucks and FTR teaming up to face the Butcher and the Blade and the Lucha Brothers. It's gonna be an epic eight man tag team match we're getting next week. We have SCU probably teaming up for the last time, which is gonna be another amazing match. To face Dark Order, I guess you can call it Dark Order, with Colt Cabana. Um, Lance Archer's facing Joy Janela. You know, rest in peace to Joy, because I don't think he's going to walk out of that match. Like, literally walk out of that I'm match. I'm glad that we got a little bit, a, a little bit during last night, during yeah. Fighter Fest. Glad that we got that a little bit, that we saw a and little Dark in the week. crowd. Yeah. The kids are trying, yeah, Sunny kids are trying to hold it back and stuff. So I'm glad like we're getting like a little bit of story because it was kind of like very quickly thrown together this match. So I'm glad like even within a week that we're getting something. Yeah. Nyla Rose has, so. well, she'll be in action, action, maybe against Riho, who knows, or Rihu. 
But she's got also a big <laughs> announcement, which is going to be awesome to see or hear what it's about. Orange Cassidy is facing Chris Jericho 101. That's sure to be an entertaining match. And then we have now the Tag Team Championships, which are going to be Private Party and Kenny and Hangman. That's going to be... You, you think of the storylines aside and who's going to win aside, Kenny Omega and Hangman Page against Private Party in a match, in a tag team match? Like, this is going to be a very good match. And that's that could be main event level. I would put them on the, on the main event. But to me, it kind of... I kind of think that it's either going to be Orange Cassie and Jericho to end off the show, or it's going to be the Young Bucks and FTR against Butcher and the Blade and the Lucha Brothers to end the show. It's going to be one I of think those two matches. I think that's going to end off. I think Orange Cassidy and, and Jericho's probably going to open. Yeah, they should open. I don't. They should open. I think, I think they should and open. Jericho on commentary for the rest or, of the night. Uh, or it could be a middle or like like before the main. I could see it before the main. Because we're going to have a lot of laughs and there's going to be like, I feel like Inner Circle is going to come out and beat Orange Cassidy up because I still think Orange Cassidy is going to win this. So I feel like we're going to get something that they're going to come out beating up and then Best Friends comes out. Like, I think we're going to get something like that. Have it open. That way you can have Jericho on commentary for the rest of the night because I love Jericho on commentary. Him on commentary is fantastic. It kind of sucks though because it kind of puts a couple of commentators (laughs) on the back burner. It just feels like there's way too many people at that damn table. (laughs) I would love like him doing commentary in the beginning, right? And then let's say he's like the fourth match or whatever, and they're like, "Excuse me, yeah. I have to go <laughs> wrestle right now." Then takes the headphones off or whatever, <laughs> and then walks to the ring. I would love to see something like that. Yeah. And then in, in two weeks, we hopefully get John Moxley against Brian Cage at Fight for the Fallen for the AW World Championship, and whatever matches else we're gonna get at Fight for the Fallen, which is literally the week after night two. A fighter fest, man. This is yeah. AEW pay per view month. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Yeah. Oh jeez. But yeah, good first night. I enjoyed it. It's very entertaining. I love what they are doing with the the fans with the whole hashtag during the picture in picture. They're trying to get you not to flip that remote. Trying to get you stay to entertain with the giving away the the, the prize pack and the Jericho uh, Zoom call, which is pretty cool. So I imagine they're going to do that next week. But a good episode of Fire Fest this week. Yeah. Very much enjoyed that. But yeah. Um, good shit. Good shit. <laughs> good shit. You know, that was good shit, Tiff, is if people follow us on social media. That's right. They follow us at the All Elite Podcast on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Also on the whole No Holds Bar Network on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, guys. All links are located in our link tree. Going to want to go to the Twitter account of uh, No Holds Bar Network, which is NHB Network, and click the link tree, and it'll direct you to all our social media accounts. Uh, thank you to everyone who is listening on the go. Thank you very much to everyone who are listening on iHeartRadio, Spreaker, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Player FM, Pocket Cast, and Apple Podcasts. If you are an Apple Podcast listener, please, ladies and gentlemen, please leave us a comment. Tell us what you think of the show. Leave us a five-star rating if you so please. Uh, <laughs> leave us a five-star rating, whatever rating you feel. It lets us know how we're doing, and uh, it helps with uh, our, our, our charitable stuff, too. So, if you are a podcast listener on Apple, please make sure you leave us a comment and a five-star rating. So thank you to everyone who listens to us on the go. You guys are never forgotten here in the All Elite Podcast or the No Holds Bar Network. Uh, and thank you to Darren and These Wolves for letting us use the song Dead to Me. It is the official theme song of the All Elite Podcast. Guys, go show Darren some love. Check out his stuff. Check out his music. He's a great, great musician. So thank you, Darren, each and every single week right here on the No Holds Barred Network and All Elite Podcast especially. I get song. to see Darren mm-hmm. next week. Hello. <laughs> We're going to celebrate. Maybe maybe we'll uh, Skype Kyle like during it or whatever. But we told Colin at Synergy that we were going to pop a, a little bit of the bubble at him. <laughs> but we are going to celebrate his his music being on AEW. So we're definitely awesome. I'm definitely looking forward to seeing him. And guys, also with the with our No Holds Barred Network website. Yes. Okay, we got people writing articles for it. So if you are interested in writing an article for the No Holds Barred Network, hit me or Kyle up and we'll mm-hmm. talk. So it's all positive stuff and www.noholdsbarnetwork.com. You can check that out, guys. Yeah. Put up on the screen for you guys there. Yeah. And if there's suggestions that you guys want, let us know. We'll put it up there. It's still working prog, you know, process. And uh, I have a whole bunch of things up there of upcoming indie shows going Ooh. up there. There's, there's a lot. So hit us up if, if you were interested. Yeah. So that's going to wrap it up, guys, for night number one review and recap of Fighter Fest. Join us back here, right back here on Thursday night, 7 p.m. Eastern time on 
YouTube and hopefully other platforms by then. Hopefully we'll see what happens. But uh, definitely YouTube.com slash No Holds Barred Network. You can find us live each and every single week for this episode and all other podcasts on the No Holds Barred Network. I am your host as always, folks. I am your self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters, joined as always by my co-host, the EVP Giggles, the Heartbreak Chick, the Queen of the Indies herself, Tiffany. Tiffany. <laughs> Tiffany. <laughs> Tiffany. I, I almost botched that. But guys, that's going to wrap it up today. We'll see you next week right here back on YouTube for the Fighter Fest night number two review and recap. Take it easy. I don't know.